to fix up myself. I really honestly don't know what's going on today. So, yeah, that's my light coming on so that my face doesn't look too crazy. Okay, so, so there I was. I, okay, so I'm telling the story about some spiritual warfare that started in my life a few years ago. Okay, and it seems that this thing, every time that I think I get over it, like I'm, I don't know if it's the same thing or other things that's happening, but it's a spiritual warfare. Those of you who want to hear the story, you can stick on and hear the story about my spiritual warfare attempt that I've been going through. I know this is not what my life is about, but for today, I don't know. I just feel like I want to talk about this because my body is just, just not feeling well. So I was in this, I was going to a concert, um, Hezekiah Walker concert in Toronto with friends. I was in line. There was a gentleman behind me. He started talking to me. He started talking to me and, um, and, uh, find out that he's an elder in a church, like uh, a Christian. And, you know, we're talking about God and whatnot. And then, uh, at some point we exchanged numbers, right? And, and so, um, we, we started talking, he started calling me. We started talking on the phone. Um, at some point he decided that he wanted to come and, and visit. So he came to my house. I was uh, at the time living alone and this gentleman came to visit. So he came to my house. I opened my front door. Listen carefully to this story, guys. I opened the front door to this man. And as soon as he walked in and he went to give me a hug, the Holy Spirit, guys, I hear the voice of the Holy Spirit says, set up a standard just like that set up a standard and i went hi how are you you know and i kind of just like you know push like kind of like make sure he didn't get too close to me how are you and welcome and whatnot holy spirit says set up a standard and so we kept, we talked he was there he talked and whatnot and then after that he left so the this long and short of this is that we kept up a friendship where he was talking to me then i went to his church to visit um and you know it was a lovely service he's fully in 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 leadership there and everything you know it was gentleman he told me that you know he was uh i asked him about like if he's married he told me that he was married but he is separate he, he's um divorced okay told me that he was divorced and you know and then I met his children and he had young children that he was taking care of. And, you know, so he told me that he was divorced. Okay. We kept on talking. Um, long and short of this is that at some point, this gentleman decided that he is going to buy a house and he wanted me to come with him to buy his house. Now I thought that was kind of strange because I'm like, why do I need to come with you to buy your house? At this point, I'm trying to, as I said, the Holy Spirit kept saying, set up, tell me to set up a standard, right? But then after that, another time he came to visit me, the Holy Spirit says to me, ask him, and I'm not lying, guys. When I tell you the Holy Spirit speaks and you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit says to me, ask him, do you have papers to prove your divorce? I thought, what on earth? Because this is an elder in a church. How can I, how dare I ask him such a question? This is somebody that I look up to, that I respect. How can I ask him that, that kind of question? Like as if I don't trust him, I don't believe him, right? So I'm, I'm babbling with this thing in my mind as in why should I? So I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to ask, like I'm trying not to ask. And three different times the Holy Spirit says to me, ask him, do you have papers to prove your di divorce? Then after that, he called me at my workplace at one point and uh, he, he was asking me, um, we're talking and I just got kind of like, frustrated with what was what was being said because um prior to this i had received a call from his pastor and the pastor had called me saying to me um you know uh um actually no prior not prior to this just before the pastor called me i had talked to him on the phone and again i just said to him you know what the holy spirit keeps asking me to ask you do you have papers to prove your divorce so i'm gonna ask you and at that point he says to me um he doesn't he says to me, well, you know, we weren't really married. We were kind of married in proxy. And, you know, what does that mean? Whatever. He was here. The wife was wherever in Africa. And he let a friend of him of his stand in for him. And that's how they got married. So they weren't really married. But when they got to France, they remarried over. And that all kind of complications. So I'm said, I said to him, you are married. 
If you were married to this person, no wonder the Holy Spirit keeps telling me to ask you, do you have papers to prove your divorce? Because if you were married, I don't care if it was by proxy or whatever, you are married and then you redo your marriage in France. You are married. You cannot come and tell me that I am divorced. Imagine if I did not allow myself by the Holy Spirit to set up a standard as the Holy Spirit says, I could be messing around with a married man, right? So I said, no, you don't do that kind of stuff. I was really upset. Then after that, the phone, my phone rang and it was from his pastor, a person I don't talk to, don't know. So the pastor called me and the pastor is like, um, you know, I just want to talk to you because I don't know if you know that Mr. So-and-so is married and whatnot. And I said, yes, I know because I just found out, but I just let the pastor know that I said, yeah, I know. He told me that he's married and he's, div and he's, um, he's divorced or whatever. I said, no, he told me he's married or something like that. Right. And, and I said, him and I are, we are just friends. Like there's nothing going on. We are just friends. Right. And the pastor is like, okay, because, you know, so I'm thinking, how do you get my number, this pastor? And he tells me, oh, well, it's from somebody that uh, knows you and, and, and him mutually who goes to your church. And I'm like, there's nobody that goes to my church that knows this man, that knows me, that could have possibly give this pastor my number. So the pastor was actually lying. Why would you call me and lie to me and tell me? So somehow, long and short of the story is that later on, he comes to my house. He wants me to um, go buy a house with him. And I said, why would I want to buy a house with you? I said, you and I are not into anything. Why would I need to put my name to your house? And he says, well, because you know, he's, he's thinking of our, us in the future. You don't know. I wrote down your, in, in a book, when I met you, I wrote your name down and I wrote some stuff down about you and whatever, whatever I'm thinking, what are you talking about? Then I said, no, I don't want to have anything to do with it. I don't need a house. I don't want you to buy a house. Go buy your house. I'm not coming. I don't want to look at your house because we will never share a house together. I am not going to see your house. So he went and he bought his house on his own. So because he was trying to get me to go with him to get the house because he wanted to hide the house in my name because he does not want his wife to have access to that house when he goes to the courts. And I said, well, if you are already divorced, according to what you told me, why would you need, why would you be calling this new house your matrimonial home? This is not your matrimonial home because you are divorced, according to you, right? Unless you're really not divorced. So maybe why the Holy Spirit keeps telling me to ask you this question, right? And so at this point, I said, no. He went ahead, he bought his house. And at some point, I, I, he called me, I'm talking to him, and I had, I had fallen asleep. I was sleeping when, uh, just before he called and I had a dream. Now in this dream, guys, I was, I saw myself in church and I was a person of a prayer warrior, a prayer, what do you call it? At the altar worker in the church. So I'm standing at the altar to pray for people in my dream, my dream. And all of a sudden there's like a lineup for people coming for prayer, but there's this one lady. And she insisted that she wanted to pray me to pray for her. Nobody else. This woman had a belly this big, like a pregnant belly. And she's coming up and she's smiling nice and beautiful, but she doesn't want to go to anybody else for prayer. She's coming. She wants me to pray for her. So of course I, I, I encourage, I, you know, welcomed her. And just as I lift my hand, about to lay hands on this woman to pray for her, another lady who is a pastor's wife in that church stood up and says, this is this woman is not pregnant this is the spirit of deception and when she said that i withheld my hand like that and then that woman now her face changed and all of a sudden we started like just praying over her like like rebuking that spirit of deception from her she fell at my feet and the water of her belly like a pregnant belly went flat water was all around her so it's in essence she, the water broke and water came out but no baby so we know that this was a deceptive spirit that was coming to me, pretending to be pregnant. So whatever she was carrying, she wanted to put that on me. Like a, a, a false pregnancy, some kind of swollen belly. I don't know. But this woman was coming for me to lay hands to transfer that thing on me. Right? And so as, as, as the lady said, this is a spirit of deception. I did not touch her, but we started rebuking that spirit. And as we started rebuking that spirit, that water came out. This woman's belly is as flat as a pancake, no baby in sight. We picked 
picked her up out of this water, put her to sit on the front bench. And as we put her to sit on the front bench, all of a sudden she started coughing up and live frogs start jumping out of her mouth. These live frogs start jumping out of her mouth. And they're just jumping out in the church and jumping out in the church and just kicking off out of her stomach through her mouth and jumping out of the church, in the church. Then she got up and she started uh, coming at me. She started running after me. So now I am running around the church and this woman is chasing me. In, this is in my vision, okay? This woman is chasing me around the church. And in her hand, she has these long nails and she wants to shove the nails inside my body. I ran and I ran around the church and she's coming until I just got the spirit of boldness and I stood up to her and I stopped and I stood and I started to fight with her and I, we wrestled and we wrestled until I knock her down to the ground and, and then she, she fight and she's trying to shove the nails. I knocked the nails and one of the, the nails fell to the ground and I reached my hand, I grabbed it and I shoved this nail inside of this woman and that's how I defeated her in my vision. Now, I walk out of this vision by a phone call from this guy. When the phone ring, rang and I woke up out of the vision, I was, I answered the phone. I'm now telling him what I just dreamt. And he says to me, and I, I was describing to him the woman in my vision. He says, that's my wife. And I'm like, oh my God. And he says to me that his wife has been, is um, the reason why they separated is because she's into witchcraft. And she, 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 she practices and she studies witchcraft and that she has been studying this thing. Um, and that she, she, he had a book that he had written my name in and written down some information about me, whatever he felt, whatever he wrote about me in the book. He said, she stole the book that day. Like she stole the book. And so he says, she is going to call you because she's been calling everybody on that list. So he finally, she finally called my number while I'm talking to him. I picked up the phone and there's this voice on the phone. Hello, you know, so-and-so is this, um, this person? I said, yep, yeah, this is all right. You know, I'm talking to her and, and, uh, and then she, I, she didn't really have anything to say. She just wanted to make contact with my voice to see who I was. Then she hung up. I got back up to him and I said, this person just called me. This is how the person sound. This is what they said. He says, that's my wife. I told you she was going to call you. And he says that she's into this witchcraft things and things that she's been threatening, what she's going to do to me. You know, up until today, he has not told me. He says, I can't even tell you what she has been threatening. In any event, from then on, I started having these battles, these spiritual battles of dreams. Every time I close my eyes, there was demonic spirits that was coming at me. I mean, from, and everything was against my, my head. There was a, a little dwarf man that was sent with violence to throw something in my brain in the vision I saw it I saw him and in my vision I started to say to whatever this thing is I didn't see it in the, at first I just sensed that there was something and I spoke to this thing and I said the angel of the Lord stand in guard you know I said first the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him then I repeated and I said, I said, the angel of the Lord stand in guard around them that fear him. And the third time I said, the angel of the Lord stand in battle. Hallelujah. And when I shouted hallelujah, I heard pop on the floor. And this, this little man this high jumped from my bed with his, his, his um, vial of thing that he wanted, like a vase that he wanted to pour on my head. And he jumped onto the floor. And when I looked, it was like a little cowboy looking guy. Dressed in cowboy hat and boots. And he's short like this. And I mean, a full stature of a man, but this high. And I mean, literally. <clears throat> and, 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 and then he, he, he jumped around. And, and he's looking like confused, confused. Because he didn't know what to do at this point. I'm literally awake looking at this man on my floor. Till he just disappeared. I said, oh my God, what was that? And I'm telling you guys from then, one dream after the next, every, every spirit that was sent, I would see it as I close my eyes. I see a dwarf, I see a, 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 an, an um, what do you call it? A dis somebody who is mentally disabled, right? Uh, in, in the brain, trying to touch my head, to touch my head. And I said, oh, I should not be letting this person touch my head. And as soon as I say that, then all of a sudden, you know, I, I, I woke up out of this, out of this dream. And it was, 
I see dogs, like little dog coming at me, black dog coming at me. I rebuke this dog in my vision. And I kept saying, before it, I could even see it, I sensed it. And I kept saying to this thing, your assignment is canceled. In the name of Jesus, your assignment is canceled. And I kept saying that and I got up in my vision in this dark room. I'm trying to find my way to the entrance. And when I got to the entrance, there comes this little dog. He's coming to come to my room. And I kept saying, your assignment is canceled. And when I got up to him, he turned and he started running. And I ran after him and tell him, your assignment is canceled until he left. I opened the door, Shh, right through the door. Get out, your assignment is canceled. Let me tell you, these different demonic spirits. I hear my sister said that she had these dreams of dogs uh, two months ago. Let me tell you, these little demonic spirits, man, coming at me from right, left, and center. And I started literally got in, getting sick right i started getting so sick like my mind i was in school I, I would pass out wake up in the hospital they do all kind of tests they can't find nothing but i'm going through these these uh sicknesses that i couldn't figure it out i started getting me who never ever ever gets sick in my life started getting epilepsy just having epileptic attack, writing exams, pass out, waking up in the hospital, you know, you walking downstairs, boom, drop, wake people every minute, I just have to come and, and, and ambulance comes and everything and I'm rushed to the hospital, epileptic attack. And wh yet when they do their test, they could not find any reason for me to be having these, what they call epileptic types attacks. It went on for months. It went on for months, me praying, me trying to go through this. And one episode after the other, these demonic spirits were coming. I was, I would wake up. I, I, I give you guys, I moved uh, from, I had to move from Toronto to Montreal, guys, because it was so bad that I couldn't remember anything. Couldn't know what to do in my own house when I eat or don't eat, can't remember. Like my brain was so mushed, right? And then I come here only to, to, to be one day in, in the room sleeping. And all, when I, I would wake up, literally, I wake up and in my dream, I, 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 I could feel like something is attacking me because I keep feeling I could sense when the spirits are coming, right? And I'm being attacked and I wake up and in the ceiling, there is this thing that looks like a skeleton, a frame of, a, of an animal that I've never seen in this world, okay? I've never seen this type of animal in this world, but it's a skeletal frame of an animal, but you can literally see through it. And it's almost like it's glass, but it's uh, bones and it's like a skeletal frame and you could see through it. And this thing is up in the roof like this. It's like this, looking at me, looking at me. And then I said, I said, you know, get out in the name of Jesus. I'm speaking to it like I'm talking to you right now. And I said, you know what? You can stay there and you can, you can stay there all you want because you've already been defeated in the name of Jesus. And this thing was there and it started to give birth in my room. It started to give birth to another one of its kind. So a baby one came out of it right in my room. And I started to rebuke till the mother, she, she, she left, right? And the little baby was standing there like, like this, like it, as if it's, you know, it's trying to put on its little power and looking at me. And I said, in the name of Jesus. And then it just turned into like confettis and disappear and just, and go. And these are the things day after day, night after night. I mean, when I tell you, I've seen every demonic spirits that you can imagine. And I would wake up out of the vision and see them alive in my room. This is what I was going through, guys. And it was only through prayer. The churches were praying. People were praying for me, you know, and eventually I started feeling, I got, I remember going to one church and I got an epileptic attack in the church and the people took me downstairs and they prayed. And I tell you, after that, I haven't had another epileptic attack. It just went away. You understand? And slowly, I didn't have any more and they just went away. And from then on, just prayer and prayer and prayer. So I am going through this stuff, but it's like, it's like a residual end of it. Although I know I've been delivered every so often, I would wake up and I'd feel like exhausted. I'd feel like my brain cells are like all you know, and I just have to keep on praying. These are the things that we, we wrestle with, right? The Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? But against principalities and powers. I literally prayed this thing because one day I was at my, in my home praying on my knees as I was praying, the Holy Spirit brought back the first vision 
of the little dwarf man to me. And the spirit told me where it came from and told me it was from that, that lady that I never met. And the, the Holy Spirit says to me in that hour, I, I mean, this was been like a couple of years since I had a vision. I had no idea what it meant. The Holy Spirit says that because I started praying by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit started praying through me and praying against the spirit of dwarfism. Don't know what that is. And I'm wondering, why am I called this a spirit of dwarfism? And the spirit says, and this Holy Spirit says to me, this spirit was sent to dwarf your life to so that you will never achieve anything you set your hands to. You will never achieve it because it was sent to, 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 to dwarf your life. Everything that I would attempt would fall. I mean, at the time I had gone to school to become a, to study law. And I, and I got so sick during that study and I passed everything. Trust me, I made the president's honor roll. Seven courses, seven straight A's. I made that even though I was being rushed to the hospital, rushed to the hospital after every other day. I would be writing my final exam. I wouldn't finish my exam. And when I come out of the hospital, when I, when, when I wake up, I'm on an, in the ambulance or I'm being taken in a wheelchair because I can't walk and I'm, I'm frozen in my body. And, I, and my exam is now finished. But when I come back to school, they would tell me, you don't even have to continue writing the exam because you passed it with an A minus. You don't have to. You understand what I mean? Because I didn't finish, but everything I did was 100%. So this is how it was. My brain was under attack. And it was to stop me. I finished that and I had to leave Toronto. I come to Montreal. It's like I had to start my life over. All over again. You understand? And this was this is what has been going on. And I'm telling you, times and times again, every time I try to do something different, something else will start up. But by the grace of God, those who know how to pray. Yeah, so our followers, I hear you say your twin sister had the dwarf visions. Yes. Okay. So you see, I'm not the only one who had those kind of vision. These demonic spirits, they come in different forms, guys. And that was what this one was sent for me was to keep, was to blight my life so that my life wouldn't go forward. Now, I don't know this woman from Adam. I was in, I was standing up going to a concert and this was how I, I met this person. You understand? And God says, set up a standard. And God said, ask him, do you have proof that you divorced? You understand? And this was it because of the Holy Spirit. I didn't get myself entangled with this individual. But yet this woman find that book, whatever he wrote down and put my name, my information, whatever. This person decide that, oh, he's trying to get with this woman. I'm going to try it. I'm going to destroy her. You know, but God is, is, is able. I'm here and I'm standing, you know. So to God be the glory. <laughs> My body, sometimes when I wake up, guys, I'm like so tired. Like I, I don't tire to sleep, just my brain. It's like a feeling in the brain, like inside here just felt like a whole portion of my brain. Like literally, I would always say to my mom, if I could unscrew my head, put it down, I'd be good to go. If I just had a different head to put on, I'd be good to go. Because the mess is that, it's from my mind, you know. So the enemy always goes after that, which because the mind, you know, that's that's the thing. The, the, the enemy is trying to mess with my mind, but whatever. I'm, I'm more than a conqueror through Christ who loves me and has given himself for me. I don't know if anybody else out there has gone through these kind type of things, you know, where the enemy tries so hard to destroy you, you know. And sometimes when they can't get you one way, guys, they try a different way. You know, they can't get you in this way. And so that's why the Bible says when, when, the, when, the, the, when there was um, somebody that was delivered, you know, from satanic, from the from demonic spirit, they don't just leave you and say, forget it. Even Jesus, when Jesus was, was being tempted by the devil in the, in the, in the, uh, in, in, in the, in the scriptures, right? What the Bible says was that after a while, Satan left him for a moment. You understand? Which means he ain't done yet. He's coming back. He's going to go and figure out a way. He's there having conference around your life. Okay, so she's now starting. Because let me tell you something, guys. I had to stop even doing my live videos. 
right? When I was doing these live videos on Facebook before, right? And I had to stop doing them because like my mind, like I feel I'm a person who knows the scriptures, guys. And all of a sudden I felt like I couldn't remember anything about the word. I couldn't remember the scriptures. It's like, oh my God, talking. I'm trying to quote a scripture and I can't get it out. And it took me a couple from 2020. I stopped doing it until I started the other day again. And I had to force myself and say, you know what? I got to get back to this because I know I can't let the enemy win in this area. You understand? And so I'm doing these lives and maybe you guys think I'm so knowledgeable of the word. So many times I'm trying to quote scriptures and I can't even remember what, what, it, what it actually says, but I know it's there. You understand? But the Bible, that's why I'm going line by line and reading the Bible. I'm not here to try to prove to nobody how good I am about scriptures. I am trying to see... We can get into the word and get Christ and get more of Christ inside of us. You understand? If I can help somebody, let me listen to you, sister. You said, I'm having a spiritual warfare as I am always praying for my husband who is Muslim. Of course, you're going to have those, those spiritual warfare. Amen. You're going to have those spiritual warfare. But the thing is that we, the Bible says that we are more than conquerors. It, sometimes the things that we go through, guys, it doesn't look like it's conquering. It looks like you're, you're, you're going through a defeat situation. And let me tell you something, the stuff that I have come up under, I don't even, if I, maybe you say, because you're praying for your Muslim husband, right? Me, I'm, I don't, I, sometimes I don't even know why I come up under these attacks. I can give you guys like, um, Amen. That's right. I, I, I can give you guys a, a, a good example. One time I was in uh, Calgary. I was in Calgary, right? And I'm in a church there in Calgary. And I remember, guys, I, I'm, I'm, a prayer, I'm a person that I'm always a prayer person, okay? So prayer and the word, right? And I remember I had this vision. One day I fell asleep. It wasn't even in the night. It was like in the evening hours. And I was there on my, lying on my bed. And it's almost like I was put into a trance. When I say fall asleep, it was like I was sleeping. I was just put into a trance. Those experiences, I get them sometimes, right? But I just, was just put into a trance. And all of a sudden in that trance, I see this woman dressed in all black that I've never seen before. And she was in the church and she was kneeling down on her knees. And the pastor of the church was, on, was laying hands on her and praying for her. And the pastor was saying, be born of the water. Be born of the spirit. Be born. Of, and, he, and every time he says, be born, it, it, his voice became like a thunder. Right? And the thunder would like pow and it hits my head. I would feel it almost like it's a thunder that was resonating in my brain, in my, in my head. And I'm, I'm sitting, I'm, I'm watching this going down, but he was saying, be born. And his voice become like a thunder hits my head. Right? And by the time he got through this and I woke up, I got up out of the bed holding my head like this. I could barely walk to get from my bedroom to the bathroom. That's how much how much pressure, how much attack it felt like was going on against my brain. By the time I get to the bathroom, guys, I was bringing up blood. Okay? I was and bringing up blood. And it wasn't from my, in my, it was out of my head. You know, like if you, almost like you have a, a bad cold and you're bringing up something and it has blood in it. That's what was happening to me. I was, I just was okay. Was on my bed had a experience in the spirit and when i got up i could barely walk to get to the bathroom and i'm bringing up blood out of my 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 brain my sinuses i have to call it right and i said what on earth is this literally i was sick after that for like two weeks i was so sick and i could not understand what happened i could not understand the vision that I just had and I'm looking to see if I could see this woman because I don't know who, who this woman is but why do I have this vision I don't know let me tell you something I did not know what that vision was about until about l roughly almost two years later two years later I'm in church in the same church and I'm sitting there with a uh, church wasn't going on. It was like we were getting ready to have service, but we were all just sitting around and talking at first. We were there because we have service, I think, in a day. It was a Sunday. And so we stay back at church and everybody just sit around and talk, waiting for the evening service to begin. So I'm sitting there with a group of people and out of the blue came in this woman all dressed in black. 
that I have never met except in a vision. When I see this woman, I am looking at this woman thinking I have seen this woman before. But from where? This woman walked into the church and she walked over to where I was sitting. And she went around and she greeted every person who shake their hands and say hello. And I think they may have known her. I don't know. But she walked in and she greeted everybody. And when it came to me, she looked at me and she said, she pointed her finger and her face was like this. And she points at me like this. And she just, she said nothing. She just walked away. And everybody was looking at her. The same woman that I saw in my vision that I had never met come in dressed exactly like I seen her in my vision. And all she did was she greeted everybody. And with me, that was an attack. And then she walked away. Now she started coming to the church every time now. She started coming to the church every Sunday or whatever she was there. And one Sunday evening, and she wouldn't talk to me. She would not talk to me. One Sunday evening, we were at service and we were, we were having a, um, a discussion in the church and the pastor was talking and people were, were, were talking. And all of a sudden, no, it was actually, no, it was testimony service. So people were getting up and giving their testimonies. And she got up to give her testimony. And as soon as she got up, she just said, you, that's me over there. I'm way up at the front. She points up to me and she says, I'm going to attack you personally. No surprise to me because you already attacked me in my vision and I haven't told anybody. I just know. Right. And so she says, I'm going to attack you personally. That was her testimony. <laughs> and she started to talk about how, you know, I like I have a bad like she she started to put some negative things on me, like to say I'm doing some negative things with the with, um to the pastor or with the pastor. And um, the way I talk to the pastor and whatnot what not she was going on and i was sitting there like what because i have no problem with the pastor i don't have i don't talk to the pastor anyway you know and and i said i just sat there humbly and let her finish and when she was finished i stood up and i said i was very humble i didn't attack her i just said pastor i'm not sure what this lady is talking about but in the event I have said anything or done anything that was wrong towards you, sir, I would like to apologize to you. And he says, no, no, you're okay. Like, and it's okay. No, it's okay. And, and everybody was like, because I had no idea what she was talking about. But I just quenched that spirit by just being humble and just apologize to the pastor for whatever it is that they think I may have done. And that was that. And then the next thing that happened was that this woman literally caused a breakup in the church. That she caused a split in the church so, so big that up until today it has not been mended. That the more than half of the body got up and left the church and just went to a different church. And the, she caused a split because she started talking about stuff that she's been doing with the pastor and whatever 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 so what she infiltrated herself into the pastor's home and she started to speak against him of what and what she has done he she, he has done to her and what she's done with him and whatever and that caused a big shift in the church and the church was split okay this is a church that's been in, around in that place forever one of the foundational churches in that city and all of a sudden the church was split so this was what that spirit was sent there for. And I was the, I don't know, like, I don't even know why I didn't, I was too young. At the time I was in my twenties. I had no idea what to do when I see things like that. I don't know what to do with it. I just like, Lord Jesus, help me. I don't know what's going on, you know, but these are the kind of thing. And I think some of these things like these spirits, they just come and they attack you. They attack you in your sleep. You don't even know what's going on and they're just attacking you. Let me tell you guys, spiritual warfare is for real. A lot of people don't know. And a lot of people will blame people and say, it's this one who's doing this to me and this one because they don't understand spiritual warfare. So they will always, the enemy will use you to turn against somebody who is not doing nothing bad to you because he wants to keep you in bondage. Let me tell you, you got to pray and you got to ask God to show you where these things are coming from. Sometimes you may not even know, but you just have to keep on praying. Like for me, sometimes I have no clue. I'm just like, I'm, I feel like, I have no idea why these attacks against my life, but I just keep on praising the Lord. I don't know why I'm on here talking about this. <laughs> oh my God.
Amen. As the sister says, she says, I believe it's because you are sharing the gospel, but nothing will stop you. Amen. And that's it. When the enemy knows your strength in God and you know, because Satan knows those of us who are people of faith and who believe Jesus. And when we pray, the Bible says that even the weakest saints, so it's not even about being strong. It's about your, your, if you are a prayer, your person who prays the weakest of the individual who begins to pray, my God, the devil begins to fear and to tremble. And when he fears and tremble, he starts to, 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 to strategize against you because you have an effect on his kingdom. People who don't affect the kingdom of Satan don't get no spiritual warfare. They don't have no attacks. They don't have no attacks because Satan don't have nothing to worry about with you. You understand? You're, you, you don't have no effect on his kingdom. But when you have an effect on the kingdom of darkness, believe you me, you are going to come up under attack. And some of us go through more than others. But we know, listen, since I started getting on here and talking the word of God, my strength, my energy, the only time that I don't feel my strength is sometimes when I don't come on here. And because I have other things that I have to do or something else, or if I let myself say, oh, today I don't feel like it, I'm not going to go on. The moment I don't do that, but the moment you start, because the word of the Lord, you get your strength. Amen. From reading the word, you get your strength. The Satan's little activities cannot work when you are buried in the word and when you are in prayer and when you're focusing on the things of God. But the moment he's just looking, what is he? A roaring lion walking about seeking. He's just looking for a loophole. He's just looking for a way to get in. But I thank God that the Lord, um, you know, the Lord allows us to be able to hear his voice and to know what it is that he, when he speaks, you know, it is important to know the voice of the Lord too, right? To know when the Holy Spirit is talking, because a lot of times it's not that the Holy Spirit is not guiding us. The Bible says he shall be with you always and he shall teach you all things. He shall bring all things to your remembrance. He shall be with you. So when the Holy Ghost gives you instructions on something and speak to you about something, it is important that we understand and that we hear. You understand? Because otherwise we're going to pay the penalty. And the Holy Spirit is always there. Like when I tell you that I have heard the Holy Spirit speak, I've heard the voice speak, people think it's like you're hearing voices. No, it's not like hearing voices. There's difference between hearing voices and hearing the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit speaks to you, you can hear clearly. And he doesn't have, he's not going to come and sit down and it, like sometimes people tell, tell you, um, and you know, and God said this and I said that. And God says this, and I said that. Well, maybe they have that experience with God. I don't have that experience. When God speaks, it's like he speaks and I got to move. You understand? I don't have time to be like, okay, God, and so, so and so, and then God says that. And I said this, and God says that. You know? Because God, literally, he will come and he will just say one line, one word. I've had that happen to me times and times again, where God will just say so and so. In that, in that scenario, it was a whole sentence. Ask him, do you have papers to prove your divorce? Never in my history of life have that question ever come in my mind for any man, any person. And this time it did. So it was God telling me that this man is not divorced. I did not know that there was, I did not know that there was such a thing called marriage by proxy. I had no idea about it. You understand? But this man was, he was married and he's using and trying to tell me he was not, he was divorced, but he was not still married to his wife only separated but separation is not divorced you understand and god does not play that he don't want you running around with the husband of another person he doesn't want you running around with a wife of another the bible says let every man every man must have his own wife so god don't want you he doesn't play that you understand so god does not want you running around with, with the husband of somebody else he's not he's not about that you know so I am grateful that, you know, God speaks. He speaks through his word. So those of you who may not be able to hear the voice of God audibly, you may be able to hear it as an impression in your spirit. You may be able to hear it by reading his word and he will speak to you from that word. Amen. Um, thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm sorry for the interruption, guys. I had a call coming in. 
you know, so God can, I'm sorry for the interruption. There was a call coming in just now. So God can speak to you through his word, mighty God. And I'm so grateful for that. So that's why we, we go through this Bible, guys. That's why we go through this word every single day. And so, <laughs> I don't know why I'm going through all that. I hope it helps somebody. But anyways, yeah, pray for me. If you are a people of prayer, you know how to pray. Please pray that the Lord will grant me um, you know, just grant me wisdom and grant me revelation in the knowledge of him that I will, um, you know, whatever, whatever attack that I come upon against that I will be able to overcome those attacks because I know that they did not end. When I tell you that I went through so much, it was at times scary, you know, at times it make you feel like maybe I'm just losing my mind. You know, and, you know, it, it, it was just, I, I went through a lot. Like, I literally went through so much. I could not sleep without getting some kind of spiritual attack. I could not close my eyes. It was like, it was like sleep depravity because every, it was, I was almost afraid to go to sleep because of the things I would see in my vision. But I would tell people, don't mess with me. Don't try it because if you try it, I'm going to see it. I'm going to go to my bed. I'm going to see it. I'm going to know you're doing it. You understand? So, <laughs> you know, but I, I thank God that the Lord has brought me a long way, to be honest with you, a long way that I can actually go to my bed and sleep and wake up and be okay. Like, I mean, sleep and wake up and be okay. And it's not like I don't dream anymore. I dream, but you know, it's not like crazy dreams. And when it's crazy dreams, then it's like, okay, I know I need to pray for that person or whatever. So I hear somebody says, I'm in a situation like that. I had a business and was doing well. All of a sudden, I hated it. Mm -hmm. Mighty God, Jesus. Mighty God. Yeah, so you felt like you just, the, your, your business and you felt like you were doing very well in it. And all of a sudden, you just started to have hate for the Lord towards this thing that you loved before. You don't know where it's coming from. And have you prayed about that? Because sometimes, you know, I mean, you know, it, it could be spiritual attack. And it could also just call burnout. Like if you're doing it and you're doing so much that your body could become so tired and burnt out that you might almost hate the thing that, that you're doing. So you need to really pray to see if it's just maybe, maybe you're, if you're putting too much time into it. Um, oh no. So, oh my God, father, we ask for your strength here. So she says that three, uh, the person says that three men attacked her in the store that she in her store that she was running her business mighty god but lord jesus but you know let, let us just pray and 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 don't let this thing discourage you because you have to know if god is the one that gives you this business idea you know what i i always know from scripture the bible says oh my god one of the scripture that i really love is um i think it's in psalm what is it psalm chapter one it says and whatsoever you do shall prosper when you are walking in faith guys and you are trusting God it's like it didn't say if you do this thing or that thing it says whatsoever you do shall prosper so I believe that as a child of God if you're a believer and you're a child of God and you're doing something you can step out on faith and do something and God will prosper you in it because you know um he, he has your best interest at heart and so he will bless whatsoever you whatever you put your hands to you understand whatever you touch whatever you put your hands to the, the same way that god is going to bless and make sure that whatsoever you do prosper trust me the enemy is also trying to make sure that whatsoever you do don't prosper mighty god Mighty God. So the sister says some other lady was involved, so she had to close her store. Now she's trying to move the store to another city, you know. Well, I mean, just pray, pray and make sure that your guidance is from the Holy Spirit, right? So you're not just deciding to go to another city because if... If, if that's not what you're supposed to be doing anyways, it doesn't matter which city you go, you will have this problem. But if it's the will of God for you to do it, and if you're handing it over to the Lord and letting him, you know, be the caretaker of your, of, of, of this thing that you're, you, you have been given to do, then he will guide you and he will open the doors, you know? So there's no, it, it's, it's not, it's not an open or, or, or shut case, really. You just have to trust the Lord, put it in the hand of the Lord, let him guide you and be very careful who you bring into your business. Is. Be very careful who you open yourself up to. And, 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 you know, sometimes we like to tell people our things. I know oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And sometimes not, not everybody's going to be on board with you. They will try to 
to to destroy you along the way you know but we have to trust the lord me i don't do i don't have a business or anything like that my 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 thing is like i had i my thing is i had what i would say had i say had because <laughs> i have a good brain okay i think the lord blessed me with a very smart mind a very good brain and when it comes to school like i'm straight a's like i don't even have to really i sit in class the teacher say it one time i could literally tell you what's going on before the teacher gets to the end of their of their dialogue but i i have a good brain for school i have a good brain and i don't know if this is why the enemy tries to attack me so that i would not be able to prosper in the things that i was trying to do you know but i felt for many years, guys, I felt like my hands were tied. I don't know if you've ever had that feeling where you felt like you had chains on your hands. And I kept saying, I don't know, like I just feel like they're chains. Like my hands always felt like they were, no matter what I do, I felt like I had chains on my hand. Mighty God. And through prayer and through just leaving, putting it into the hand of God, I don't even know when those chains were, break, were broken. Right? I don't know. Those, those chains were broken. It's like I don't feel it anymore. So now I feel free. I feel like I can do anything I put my mind to right now. You understand? Because that bro it feels like it has been broken. This thing that I'm struggling right now is what is this light sensitivity. And light sensitivity, I don't know from which demon it's coming from, but it's going to go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You understand? So I feel like I'm having this light sensitivity where I'm trying, if I don't have my glasses, even these glasses now I have to get like different ones that bigger so that they can uh, cover more of my eyes because apparently the light goes through over here and it makes you feel like you can't function like you want to function, you know, but in terms of that, those spiritual warfares, I feel like the Lord has given me victory over that. I really feel like that. For years, I felt like my brain felt. I remember, I remember, I remember going to church one time, and I'm standing in church, and I'm not telling people like uh, what I was feeling. I'm just standing in church. It was actually a choir practice, and I remember my God bless his soul. My my brother, he passed away right now. Um, unfortunately, he 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 died suddenly. Um, very young man. But prior to that, like I mean, I remember going to church. My God. And I'm in choir practice and I'm standing there and I heard at the end of the choir practice, I heard when the young man, this brother, that I, a friend of mine, he passed away. But I, I heard when he says to somebody, he said to the, to the congregation, he says, stretch your hands towards her. My eyes were closed, right? Because we were getting ready to pray. And I hear when he says, stretch your hands towards her. And I was thinking... Towards who? So I'm opening my eyes to see towards who I need to stretch my hands. When I opened my eyes, all hands were stretched towards me. And I realized that, oh, it's me. <laughs> all hands were stretched towards me. And so he started, they started to pray. And he came over and he laid hands on my head. And he started to pray. And I'm telling you, this man was praying things about me that, how did he know? It's like God, God must have just told him like in that moment, because the things that he was praying was exactly what I was going through in my mind. And he laid his hands upon my head and he started to pray. And when he lifted his hands off my head, it's, it felt like he took out a part of my brain, like a whole big section. I literally could feel cold air coming into my scalp, into my brain. Okay. So as I left the church that night and we were walking home with my girlfriend, I kept saying to her, um, is there a hole in my head? And she said, Jacqueline, no, there's no, I said, there is a hole. Look. And she says, no, there's not a hole. And I said, when he took his hand off my head, he took a piece of my, the, there's a hole, a hole in my head. And I could feel the cold air was hitting on my brain on the inside. But let me tell you something. It was, he took that thing off my head and that all that pressure and that feeling of oppression and depression that was upon me at that time it was like the man just took it off of me you understand so people don't understand how how very potent and important um prayer is and, and that when we pray, God literally hears and answers prayer. And from, and that was when I went home and that's when that, that was where my healing started, where I started to feel like I, I wasn't waking up depressed. 
I'm feeling like I can't ma manage life anymore. You know what I mean? And, and, and little by little, I begin to get better and to get better and to get better. So I know that God is able, no matter what is going on in our lives, like God is able. Let me see what the sister is saying here. She says, I think I call, I can do, I can do well there. Okay. I am praying for guidance and have um, found a good, better location. Okay. The new place is cheaper. Saw a lot of hatred by these three people. Okay. Thank you. So if you don't mind, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for you and that the Lord will guide you into this business. And I pray and I pray as I pray. I don't know what your business is, but I'm praying for you that this thing will work for you if it is a business that is in line with the will of God. Okay, so I'm sorry if you know for yourself what your business is and if it's in line with the will of God. If it is a business that is contrary to doctrine, guys, I cannot help you on that. So, um, and that's my, uh, my disclaimer here. I'm going to pray, but I'm praying in line with the word of God. And so, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I want to bring this um, person to you, Lord, uh, that has this business that she's, uh, he or she's trying to run. All right. And she says uh, it's a, a boutique. So whatever this uh, per, this business is, Lord, it is uh, we're putting it into your hand right now. Oh, God, this person, she said that they have tried in a different location with uh, other people and they encountered hatred and, and, and fightings and Lord to the point that she had to close her business, but she has not given up Lord. She's now moving to a different location, which she felt that you have guided her and she has a good location Lord. And so father, we know that your word says that whatsoever we need Lord, we must ask of you and that you, Oh God will give Oh God, because you will not withhold any good thing from them that fear you and walk uprightly. Oh God, and so this boutique, Lord, I put it into your hand. I pray, Father God, for direction for this individual, Lord, as they continue in their business. Direction for the selection of the people that will work with them. Direction, God, for the choice, oh God, of things that they will sell in this boutique. Father God, we come against every spiritual attack against this business, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you will put within the heart of this individual this heart of love and of faith, oh God, to believe you, Lord. And I pray God that they will trust you God for their business that they will trust you for direction in every area of this business Lord and that God they will submit to you oh God what belongs to you as well God and that God they will submit themselves to you oh God that their business will not take more time than they will spend in your presence oh God in the mighty name of Jesus God we ask you God that you will be the head and the tail of this business Lord that God, you will be the director, oh God, that you will be the front door and the back door, oh God, that God, you will surround this business and God, that everything will work according to your divine will and purpose, oh God. Father God, I know that you have our good, our good, uh, every good thoughts towards us, oh God, of peace, not of evil, to give us future, to give us a hope and everything that concerns us, oh God, is important to you, oh God. And so Father, we put it into your hand right now, Lord. I want to thank you for your guidance. I want to thank you for your protection. And I want to thank you, O oh God, that you will keep them, O oh God. Keep her in perfect peace, God. Let her mind be stayed upon you. And I'm sorry I'm saying her because I'm thinking it's a woman, but whether it's a woman or a man, in Jesus' name, that their mind will be stayed upon you. They will continue in faith in Jesus Christ. Oh God, Father, we know, Father, that today I was supposed to come on here with this word, but God, whatever we speak today, I pray that it will go to edify and to bless somebody and to lift up somebody, somebody that may be coming up under a spiritual attack, Lord. In Jesus' name, even my friend Sandra, Lord, who my God is going through this attack, even as she prays for her husband, Lord. Father, we know that your will, Lord, is that every person be born again for the kingdom of God. And Father, whether it be a Muslim soul, oh God, a Buddhist soul, Lord Jesus, whatever type of people out there, Lord, you have people that you are pre-selected for the kingdom of God. And so I pray for her husband. I pray for her family. I pray that they will come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And I pray as 
this woman of God stand up in faith and stand up. Let her be shining like a light, oh God. Lord Jesus, that will penetrate their souls, oh God. Let her life be an example and a true epistle of righteousness before them, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, we thank you that your will, God, is that every soul be saved. And so I pray that those will hear this message today, who will hear my voice today, that God, they will know that you are a loving Savior, that you are a compassionate God, that your desire for them is to be saved and that they should escape the wrath to come. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we are not called to do our own thing, but we are called to be servants of the Most High God. And even as I pray under the unction of the Holy Spirit today, I pray that you will reach somebody today, Lord, who need to be delivered, oh God, who needs to be saved, oh God, who needs to be brought out of darkness into light today, oh God. Let our life be an example of righteousness to you, oh God, and to others around us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We surrender to you, oh God, and say yes to every one of your will for us, Lord. To we say yes to your will. We say yes, Lord. Yes to your will, God. I pray that you will give ears to your people that will hear what your spirit is saying, God. Open our ears, Lord. Some of us, our ears have been clogged over the years, Lord, being overwhelmed, oh God, with life and with things of life, Lord, that our ears are plugged, that we can't even truly hear what the spirit is saying. I pray that you will open our ears to hear you again, God, in the name of Jesus, because you are a God that speaks so oh God, you're a God that speaks. You're a God that is not silent. You're a God that speaks, oh God. And so even as you speak to us, Lord, let us hear and let us be willing to do what it is that you're saying to us, Lord. We thank you for it today and we bless you today, oh God. You are worthy of all praise today, oh God. You are worthy to be exalted and to be lifted high today, oh God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Lord, I magnify your holy name and I thank you in Jesus my name hallelujah glory be to god almighty glory be to god almighty hallelujah glory to god hallelujah jesus father i just thank you for your your finished work right now lord i thank you for what you're doing guys we were supposed to be going through thessalonians and yesterday we did thessalonians chapter one and i believe two right hallelujah oh thank you jesus So we read, let me, I'm trying to see if we went through two. I think we went through chapter one yesterday, guys. I can't remember. Anybody remember where we were? Okay, I'm just going to read through chapter two because I remember if I went through it yesterday. I'm going to read through it real quick before I go, okay? So um, chapter two says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming and the Thessalonians, um, no, sorry, I'm going over to Second Thessalonians. No wonder I'm I'm getting lost here. So I'm in First Thessalonians, guys. First Thessalonians, chapter one, and yeah, chapter three. We're supposed to be at chapter three in th in um, Second Thessalonians, which I'm gonna do it right now. Okay. So Thess um, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> oh my God, oh Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, chapter three. Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone and sent Timotheus, our brother and minister of God and our fellow, fellow, fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. So Paul there is trying to tell them why they come to them, why he sent all these people to them was to, so that they would be established in the faith and comforted in the faith. Amen. So you are established and you are comforted. You are encouraged in the faith, guys. Those of us who are, we're talking about believing in God and we want to stay, we want to be established in it, right? We want to stay um, rooted and grounded in it. And we also want to be encouraged to continue in it. That's faith. we got to continue in faith, right? That no man should be moved by these afflictions, Whatever you're going through, even the, sister, the person who's going through this situation with their business, whatever you're going through, don't be moved by these afflictions. Don't let, it, let nothing overturn your faith. 
Amen. For yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation even as it came to pass. And you know, as you're going to go through, as Christians, you're going to suffer some stuff. You're going to suffer some tribulations. And I often say that if you're a child of God and you don't go through nothing, then you need to really check yourself again. Recheck your, your relationship with God. Because because you cannot and will not be a child of God and not go through anything, right? Satan is not that nice. He is not that nice to say, well, this sister is a powerful woman of God. I'm just going to leave her be. You understand? You are a child of God. You are going to suffer for the kingdom of God. Amen. You're going to go through some stuff. For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to you to know your, your faith. You see... Paul says, I sent to know your faith. He didn't call, and I talked about that yesterday. He was not coming, or he didn't care to know about what good works you've been doing, how well you've been living, you know, how much you did this and you didn't do that, and you did this and you make sure you fulfill this law and that law. That's not relevant. We're not careful about that. We want to know your faith. How deep is the root of your faith in God? So he says, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter, have tempted you and your labor be in vain. I don't want when Satan come and tempts you, you turn back from faith. Oh, uh, why would he, why would he jump from faith to labor? Why would he jump from faith to labor? Listen to the language of the Bible. For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, Paul says, I couldn't hold myself any more back because he couldn't come to see them so he says i send to know your faith i want to know that you are still standing in faith that you're still deep and rooted and grounded in the faith in jesus christ lest by some means the tempter have tempted you and our labor be in vain we have he says they toil through the help of the holy spirit to get you to believe in God, to get you to receive that word of faith and to believe. No, I don't want all that we have done to get you to this point to be in vain because you now stop believing and start relying upon your own works to be saved. Right? But now when Timotheus came from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, what is important to your salvation? Faith in Jesus Christ and love. Of God and all the saints. That's what he's looking for. Amen. So your faith and charity. And that you have good remembrance of us always desiring greatly to see us as we also to see you. Therefore brethren we were comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith. When I hear of how much you believe in God. It comforts my spirit in spite of the problems that I'm going through. For now we live if we stand fast in the Lord. He says we live if we stand fast in the Lord. You realize the Bible uses a lot of ifs when it comes to your salvation. It uses a lot of ifs. So your part is to believe. Your part is to stand fast in that faith. In the Lord. Not in your own ability. Not in your own strength. Amen. Because it's not by might nor by power, but by the spirit of the Lord. And so for now we live if we stand fast in the Lord. That's when you are alive in God. If you step out of faith, you have stepped back into dead works and you are dead. So you cannot make heaven. No dead thing will get into heaven. You understand? You will not get to heaven a dead man. You must be alive to get there. How are you made alive? By faith in Jesus Christ. For what thanks can we render to God again for you, for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God? Night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Amen. In your faith. So yes, the person here says faith without works is dead. That's right. Faith without works is dead. But faith does not need, um, when you say faith without works is dead, please explain to me what you mean. Because a lot of people think that you have to do righteous deeds to be saved. That's what we mean when we're saying faith, um, does, you, you, it's, not, it's not by works you're saved, it's by faith. 
By faith are you saved through work, by, by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. So you are saved by faith. When you come to Jesus, you had no good works, right? But you got saved because your faith was planted in him. That's how you are saved. For you to continue in salvation, you must continue believing in God. You must continue believing in the finished work of Jesus Christ. So now your, your righteous works that you will do will be an offshoot of the fact, the fact that you have been saved by grace, right? So when you're saved by grace, you begin to produce fruits of righteousness, right? The fruit of righteousness begin to be produced in you when you're saved by faith. It's not that you're doing righteous deeds to be saved. So when we say works, we don't, God is against works. That means you are trying to do right deeds to be saved. You think that your salvation is based on the fact that you do these good works. But it's not that. Your salvation is because you believe in Jesus Christ. And when you believe in Jesus Christ, then you begin to produce good works by the help of the Holy Spirit at working in you. Hallelujah to God. So let me see. Somebody's talking about Allah. Let me go back and read. Amen. That's right. That is through Jesus Christ's righteousness. That's what we're talking about. So you're saved by the righteousness of God. It is Christ that does the good work and not you. Your salvation is based on his good work. That's why we talk about the finished work of Jesus Christ. He did all the good work. He finished it. And he says, it is finished. Man's redemption is paid. Man now just have to put his faith in that. And when you put your faith in that, there is a trans a transformation that begins to happen and you you are changed from darkness to light you understand you are changed you are transformed you are trans uh, transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light you are now a son of God you who were dead in trespassing and sin have been made alive with Christ and so now you're a son of God and you walk out your salvation in faith let him let the work that is now producing you be the work of the spirit and not you now relying on your own effort to think that, well, if I just do this and that and that, then I'm saved, but you don't need the Holy Spirit. You don't even believe that the Holy Spirit, that, that, that Christ can save you. You have to work for your salvation now. The part, that's what the scripture is talking about. It's against that, right? So everywhere you see in scripture is that faith is, the, is, is preeminent. Faith is the focal point in, for salvation. You must believe. Amen. So therefore, brethren, we, we were comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith. For now we live if we stand fast in the Lord. For what thanks can we render to God again for you for all the joy wherewith the, we joy for your sakes before our God. Night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. All right. Now God himself. And our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you and the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men even as we do toward you. To the end, you may see that he may establish your hearts unblameably. So who is going to establish your hearts? Who is going to make you unblameable before God? It is God himself. He, not your good works. He, to the end, he might establish your hearts unblameable in holiness. It is God that will establish your heart, making you unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. So let the work of Christ be done in your life. Let God, let God continue this work through the Holy Spirit of making you righteous, establishing you, making you perfect in him. And so when Jesus Christ comes, he will find that you are established, you have stayed with him, you have stayed rooted and grounded, your roots of faith go deep in God that you are no more reliant on your own self effort you are trusting in the finished work of Jesus Christ for your salvation so that is you know that is the problem with ph phony religions for fake religions say it's your good works that save you 
fake religions tell you that if you do some good deeds, um, God is going to look at your good deeds and he's going to measure them up with your bad deeds. And if your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds, then you make heaven. And if your bad deeds outweigh your good deeds, then you make... You... What nonsense? What nonsense? You understand? When you come to Christ, all of your bad deeds are washed and wiped and removed from your slate. And if you continue in faith, you will only produce good works because the good work is what is Christ is doing in you. You're not relying on yourself. The moment you start relying on yourself, you will have, you will have, you will, you will not have righteousness because righteousness, if it's on you, if it's your righteousness, it's like filthy rags before God. But his righteousness is righteous to him. So we trust in his righteousness and we rely on that and we, we, we allow that to carry us into eternity. Amen. So let me see what somebody's saying here. Let me finish up here. To the end, we may, he may establish your hearts unbearable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. So let God establish your heart. Let him make you holy. Let him make you unblameable. Trust him for the, for the end of your salvation. Amen? In Jesus' name. So let me read what somebody is writing here. Allah gives, forgives those who seek forgiveness from him. So if you mean by Allah mean God, then the God does forgive, but he only forgives those who seek, seek him through his son, Jesus Christ. Because the blood of Jesus is the only remedy for sin. So if you don't come to, 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 to Allah or to God through Jesus you ain't getting no forgiveness because God can't forgive your sins outside of the remedy. And the remedy for sin is the blood of Jesus Christ. Cleared. Now, Allah forgives those who seek forgiveness from him if you come through Jesus Christ. Amen. Allah forgives those who seek forgiveness from him. And so let me go. We also, we also to be doers of the word. Of course we have to do, be doers of the word because you have to be doers of the word. How are you, how can you be led by the spirit and not do the word? The Bible says as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the, are the sons of God. That's what we mean by trusting in the finished work. That allowing and allowing God, the Holy Spirit, to be at work in you, not you doing work on your own to be right, to be, um, to be viewed as righteous. You understand? That's what I meant when I say that when you are in God, then you begin by the Holy Spirit to produce the fruit of righteousness. That's what this person says that we also to be doers of the word. When you read this word, those of you who are being led by the spirit of God will do the word because the word of God is synonymous with God. The the word of God is synonymous with God. The word and the Holy Spirit in you will never guide you to do anything outside of this word. Amen? It will never do it. So be led by the Spirit. And you will fulfill the word. But if you are led by the flesh, the Bible says as many that are, as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Those who are led by the flesh will fulfill the deeds of the flesh. Amen? So you can have faith that move mountain and without love, it's useless. That's right. So you, faith and love. Remember now, we have faith and we have love. So God is saying that you need to have faith in him. But if faith, if you believe in Jesus Christ and you are trusting him for the end of your salvation, he, the Bible says that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Again, guys, those who trust the living spirit and, and walk in the way of the Holy Spirit are led by the spirit of God will be children of love. They will produce the fruit of love. That is part of the fruit of righteousness. They will produce the fruit of love. They will love one another. You understand? So you cannot be a true believer in Christ and not have love. A true believer in Christ is led by the spirit of God and therefore we will have the love of God because the love of God is shed abroad in your hearts by the Holy Ghost. The person who say I believe in God but don't have love is because they really don't believe in God. They believe that God exists. That's not called believing in God. Believing that somebody exists, I can believe that the prime minister or the president exists. There is a president and there is a prime minister, but I don't believe in him. 
Everything he says is nonsense. Everything he says, I don't, I, I, I take it with a grain of salt. You understand? That you can believe that somebody exists, but you don't believe in the person. But when it comes to believing in God, it's, it's, it's bigger and different than believing that God exists. Because the devil himself believes that God exists. He believes, he fears, and he trembles. But doesn't make him a believer. Doesn't make him a born again. You understand? So there is the difference between believing God exists and believing in God. A true believer who believes in God. Meaning that everything that comes out of God, I trust it. Amen? Everything that God says, I accept it as yea and amen. Mighty God of Daniel, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. And so, that's, so let me read Romans. Somebody's giving me Romans 8 and verse 1. I love the word. Let me see the time because I got to go to work. What time is it, y'all? <laughs> I got to even see the time. One twenty nine. I got to go. Okay, Romans. Oh, you guys get me started. I'll get my strength back. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, Romans 8, yes, Romans 8 and verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, yes, who walk not after the flesh, yes, but after the spirit, what does that mean? Ooh, you just, you just gave me a good, a good scripture here, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, who is not relying on their own human effort. That's what that means. They're not, they're not relying on flesh. They're not walking after fleshy things. They're not walking after their own will. They're not trusting in their own ability. They're not leaning upon um, human uh, strength, right? But after the Spirit of God. So they are trusting the Spirit of God. They are being led by the Spirit of God. They are indeed sons of God. To those ones, there are no condemnation. Why? Because their faith is fully planted in Christ. And Christ has already been condemned for your sins. So therefore, there is no condemnation to you because there is no double jeopardy where God is concerned. There cannot be double jeopardy. He cannot charge Jesus for your sins and turn around and charge you for it as well. If you are fully, fully trusting in the finished work of Jesus Christ, you have come up under the banner of the condemnation which was in Christ. You've already been condemned in Christ. Therefore, you cannot be recondemned at the end for the same sin. You understand? So Jesus Christ was, he paid the penalty and you and I died in him. And when he rose, we rose in him and he is seated with, with Christ, with God at the right hand of God. We are seated in him. Amen. So therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to such a person because this person is trusting, is fully embedded in, is fully um, has, has planted and let down their root of faith in Jesus Christ. They are leaning upon the arms of spirit, the spirit of God, and they're not leaning upon their own um, tr trusting in their own flesh. You understand the scripture says the arms of flesh are not, I think it's a songwriter that says the arms of flesh will fail you. You dare not trust your own. The arms of flesh, guys, that is the flesh that the scripture is talking about here. Amen. To God be the glory. So thank you for that scripture today. Because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The law of sin and death says you sin, you must die. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus says Christ died and paid for you already. So now you are made alive in him by just having put to put your faith in him. Amen. Amen. Oh, we have a Bible. We <laughs> this is so good. Anyways, let me let me go. I love I love the scripture. I love the fact that you can throw me out some scriptures that I can read here. So let me go here. And if I'm if you feel that what I'm saying is not in line with what you're thinking, please let me know. Please let me know, okay? Because um, me, I just go by the word. Luke chapter nine. And if you tell me what you're thinking, then I can tell you. I can I can help you out there. You know, because I know I'm not talking I'm not talking foolishness. I know I'm speaking the truth of the word. Amen. 
Luke chapter 9, 23. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, that's right, and take up his cross daily and follow me. Amen. So what does that mean to you? And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, right? <laughs> oh my God. Okay, whatever. Somebody's talking about Justin Trudeau. So the son, of, okay, so let me read from 22. So the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day, which we know it happened, right? And he said unto them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Okay, so you have to deny self, right? So self, flesh, self cannot be involved in this thing. You must take up the cross. So now you're trusting in what, the, what, 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 what Jesus did. Take up his cross and follow me, right? For what, whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. You know that those of us who are born again Christians, guys, you're going to have a cross to bear. You're going to have a cross to bear, but your cross that you're bearing is not, is not for your salvation. You don't bear the cross of salvation, right? Your cross that you're going to bear is the cross of persecution. You're going to be persecuted because for the, for the sake of Christ. You're going to go through trials and temptations for the sake of Christ. That's your cross. So when Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me, he's not saying that you have to do nothing for your salvation. He's saying that um, he is going to die. He is going to suffer. He is going to pay the penalty for your sins. And if you, any man will come after me, let him deny himself. That means he can't trust in his own flesh now to save himself. But he's going to have to take up a cross. His cross is the persecution and the trials and the stuff that he's going to go through as a Christian. Because you are trusting in Jesus, you are going to go through persecution. Those, that cross that you're bearing is not the cross of salvation. Just get that straight. You're not bearing the cross. Jesus bore the cross of salvation. That cross on which your penalty was paid. The cross on which the handwriting was, was, was nailed, right? The handwriting that was against you and I was nailed to the cross of Jesus, not to your own cross. You will suffer for Christ if you are a believer trusting in Jesus Christ. You know that there are people that probably were crucified or killed for the sake of Christ that will not make heaven anyways. It's not because they truly believe in, in Jesus that they died, you know. Because they were called a Christian. You know, like, you know, there's a lot of people in this world who are say, who say I'm a Christian. Just because mommy and daddy was a Christian, they're not Muslim. What they mean is that I'm not Muslim. I'm not, uh, I'm not Muslim. I'm not, um, what's the others? Uh, Buddhist. I'm not, uh, Confucius or whatever. I don't know them. So they're not that. So therefore they're Christians. But that's not the type of Christians that make heaven. Christians that truly make heaven is not, is not something you gain by, by association. Christians is a relationship with, with Christ, right? Those people who died because they're truly believers in Jesus Christ, right? And they were crucified or sacrificed for the sake of Christ because they refused to give up their faith in Jesus. You understand? But there are people who will die and because they were, they were lumped among Christians. Imagine if there is a church and the church is packed on a Sunday morning. And there's a lot of people that showed up in church this morning because they are not Muslims. They didn't go to a mosque. They went to a church. Right? But they're not all saved in the church. But the church blew up and they all died. Some went to hell because they did not have Christ as their center. They did not have their faith planted in Jesus Christ. They weren't trusting him for their salvation. They were taking up their own cross and thinking when they, when they say take up their cross, they're thinking it was their good works that was going to save them. But no, that's not your good works that's going to save you the cross of salvation jesus christ bore that one you will bear a different cross the cross of uh there is tribulations and persecutions and 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 you know you'll be oppressed because of your faith in jesus christ but you don't get saved just because you were you don't get to heaven just because you got you 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 you, you were tr in tribulations for christ you go to heaven because you believed in the finished work of his cross you believe that what he paid for you was sufficient for your sins. 
Amen. So that's all I'm trying to say, guys. We have to believe in Jesus and Jesus has to be our center. My salvation can't be based on because I feel that I'm, you know, look at me, how I live. I'm, uh, you know, it, imagine the, 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 the gentleman that was standing there, the publican, right? It was considered a sinner. And the Pharisee, who's considered the master of the law, he knows the law, so he's been a, he keeps the law. And he looks down while the publican is there saying, Father, have mercy upon me, a sinner. From his heart, praying to God to have mercy upon him. And the Pharisee, who thinks that he's following the law, which is the flesh now, right? The Pharisee, the other one is by the spirit. The Pharisee is trusting in his own ability to keep the law, saying, I am so glad I'm not like this publican over here. I mean, I go to I go, I go to this, I do this every time. I make sure I fulfill this law. I wash my hands five times a day. I do this and I do that. Whatever. So he thinks he's righteous. But the Bible tells you that the publican, the sinner man who smote his breast and trusted the spirit, he went home more justified than the other one. So don't we, we have to be careful that our salvation that we think we have is not based on what we think we can do for God. It's more what God has done for you. That's your salvation right there. What God has done for you through the person of Jesus Christ paid the penalty for your sin, lay down his life. The Bible tells us in Acts, what was the Acts 28? I keep trying to find that scripture from the other day. Hold on, guys. I got to find it. Oh, my God. Let me go back to this scripture because this one, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Acts chapter 28, I think it is. Hold on. I tell you, my, 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 uh, my mind sometimes forget the scriptures. Okay, so Acts chapter 20, guys. Acts 20 and verse 28. Listen to this carefully. Acts 20 and verse 28. It says here, Paul was speaking. He says to the church, he says to the pastors, he says, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he, he who, he God, hath purchased with his own blood. When I read that, my question to you is, when did God have blood? God purchased the church with his own blood. Who is it that went to Calvary's cross? You tell me it's Jesus. And some of y'all say Jesus is not God. Some of you say Jesus is just a man. He's just a prophet. But here the scripture tells us that God purchased the church with his own blood. He did not say God purchased the church with the blood of Jesus. Because Jesus is God and we read it before that Jesus is the expressed image of God the Father. So Jesus is God manifested in flesh. He is Emmanuel, God with us. Don't let people tell you anymore that Jesus is not God. God purchased the church with his own blood. And so it is the blood of God that we need to trust. This is what we trust in. What he did on Calvary, his finished work, what he did. That's our salvation right there. You understand? So he paid it for us. He obtained our salvation for us. He bought us back from sin. Redeemed us and restored us back to himself. Mighty God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory be to God. It's like a husband who has his wife. And then his wife was kidnapped. And the husband 
do everything that he needs to do to track down the kidnappers and to find where his wife is located. When we watch these type of movies, we think, ooh, he's such a hero. And then he gets there and he breaks in and he defeats these kidnappers and, 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 and break the bonds from off his wife, hug and kiss his wife, pick her up and bring her out to safety. That's what God did for the church. Amen. But when he did it, 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 it took his entire blood. He poured out himself for the penalty. Amen. To pay the penalty rather for our sins. He purchased the church with his own blood. He rescued us. And so we have to trust that finished work. And stop saying that the work of Jesus Christ, what he did on Calvary was not sufficient or enough. So we now have to add to the work. We have to do, 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 do. If I don't do this, I do that. And if I do that and do that, then I... I... No. Trust in the living God. It's your faith that God is looking for. Amen. And faith will work in you. When you trust the Holy Spirit, it will work out that love of God in you. You will be able to love the brethren. You'll be able to love because that love of God is shed abroad in the hearts of those who trust him. Amen. In Jesus name. God bless you. I'm going to end here, guys. I got to go to work. <laughs> I got to go to work. <laughs> Have yourself a good day. So God bless you. Please pray my son. I feel better already, y'all. I feel better already. I tell you. Maybe that's the thing. I just need to get up and get on here. Maybe I just need to get up and get on here. Just getting started. Sometimes it's so hard. But when I start here, it's like everything else just. And then for the rest of the day, I'm good. But you know, I tell you, the enemy is like, is fighting us so much. Fighting so much. But my strength is in Jesus. You know this little song. There's a little course I wrote before. And by the way, Facebook, this is my song. Y'all, don't, 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 don't stop my video. Every time I sing, I have to say that. <laughs> Even though I, no copyright. Okay, whatever. But it's my song. My strength is in Jesus. I'm a victor. That's all I know. He's ever with me. He answers my call. No burdens too heavy. No problem too tall. My strength is in Jesus. I'm a victor. That's all I know. My strength is in Jesus. I'm a victor. That's all I know. He's ever with me. He answers my call. No burdens too heavy. No problem too tall. My strength is in Jesus. I'm a victor. That's all I know. God bless you guys as I go today. Have yourself a blessed day. In Jesus' name. Facebook, I'm leaving.